Hey y'all, it's Will, the Deep Sky Dude. I got a quick video here, it's gonna be kind of fun. Sky Safari Pro is an app that most of you guys know about. Uh, you can get it uh, on the App Store and things like that. I have it on my Mac, and they've added this little Apollo tab. It was a free download, and uh, it gives you these mission overviews and, and runs these little simulations for you, which I think are great. Some of them are really glitchy and buggy, uh, and they don't work quite right, but the ones that kind of caught my attention, I'd like to show you guys and just you know do a quick little freeform video on kind of how this simulation stuff works. Again, Sky Safari Pro is a uh, planetarium app, if you will. It shows the sky. You can go into orbits and see how the planets move around each other and things. It's very, very cool and very fun. Uh, this one shows the trajectories of whatever Apollo mission you choose in green. And you can see here the awesome intricacies of what NASA and the astronauts at NASA were up against when they wanted to go from the Earth to the moon and come back. Um, and do it all safely. Pretty incredible stuff. So I'm going to kind of break a little bit of this down. I'm not an Apollo expert. Uh, I just really enjoy these kind of simulations, and I, uh, I find it fascinating that uh, this stuff is available and out there. We have such awesome technology at our disposal these days. So um, I just kind of like to highlight this a little bit. But you can see that you know, the orbit of the Apollo 11 capsule, and indeed most of the other Apollos, is not a uh, just a normal orbit around the moon you can see it has this sort of squiggly line so if I run the simulation again you can see that the moon is off to the left and it's moving uh, around the earth and so in order to get even to the moon in order to even get there successfully you have to shoot yourself into space away from the moon basically you're shooting yourself where the moon is gonna be in three or four days however long it took them to get there for whatever mission and then you've got to hit a small target in space and time in order for gravity, the gravity of the moon to drop you into an orbit around the moon. And you can see that you know, as the moon orbits the Earth, the orbit of the Apollo astronauts around the moon is not circular. It's, the, it's circular around the moon, but it's not circular in space time. It's more like a squiggly line, which is very interesting. And then you can see sort of their approach back to Earth um, as they head back towards the planet to bring back all the goodies they collected on the moon, the rocks and all that fun stuff. It's just really interesting to see. Um, I find this kind of these kind of simulations fascinating because it's just wonderful the technology we have available to us these days. You can see there's all kinds of different options here. You could even uh, go to the moon and basically put yourself in a panorama of the moon on that particular day at that particular time. And you can see uh, the date and time is over here on the left. And uh, you can see the Earth out here. And you can run time forward or backwards or speed it up however you want to do it. But if you speed it up forwards, it's pretty neat what the Earth does. It kind of goes up and then down and sets uh, in the, on the horizon, which is very cool. Probably similar to what the astronauts would have seen while there. Pretty cool stuff. So kudos to the uh, Sky Safari Pro people a uh, very cool simulation I love this kind of stuff like I said and I think it really helps illustrate this stuff for people who like me aren't rocket scientists we uh, we just we just like to play with it another cool feature of it is you can actually look I can put the constellation lines up and you can look and see where the astronauts sort of blasted off to you can see the constellation Virgo up there with Jupiter inside it and you can see where the moon is uh, over there by I believe that sextons and um, you can see uh, in, from Earth, the Apollo astronauts, again, they had to blast off into interstellar space where the moon will be, which I think is just so cool. Uh, you can also do these, uh, these other little simulations. This one's pretty neat where you see the moon sort of fading away as the uh, command module blasts away, bringing the astronauts home after their mission. And you can see that it, it, you're not just really going away from the moon, you're going away from the moon back towards Earth, but also the moon is going away from you because, again, its orbit takes it around the Earth, and it's pretty quick, you know, on, the, on a time scale of these kind of time scales. The moon fades away pretty quick, and it kind of looks like you're going the wrong way for a minute until the Earth's gravity takes over and sort of starts pulling you in. 
And what's cool about these simulation softwares is you can watch this in real time if you want to, you know, sort of pan around and, and look around and get a view of it, pretty much exactly what the guys would have seen. You know, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. And it just depends on which Apollo mission you're on to uh, what you can see. Now, if you speed up time and, you know, kind of run the simulation a little faster, what I'll do here is I'll switch it to uh, 10 minutes and you'll see me kind of playing with the, the time feature up and to the left. And what I'm trying to do here is illustrate, you know, how long it takes to get from the moon. If you watch this, it would take days to actually simulate the process. But I've sped it up here, and so you can kind of get a glimpse of it. You, at some point, you just see the uh, service module disconnect from the command module, which, you know, it's buggy, like I was saying earlier. But it's still pretty cool. It's free, so you might as well just enjoy it, uh, kind of fill in the gaps with your imagination a little bit. Really cool stuff. You can see Australia down there as the astronauts kind of come back in after their historic mission 50 years ago this week, basically. It's unreal. And, uh, you know, they splash down in the middle of the ocean. Uh, the uh, Navy goes out and grabs them, brings them home. And uh, the guys are heroes, American heroes, human heroes, whatever you want to call them. It's just fascinating stuff. And you can see right here at the end, it sort of glitches out. It's sort of getting weird. And then we're back on Earth and everything's kind of strange. That's part of the bugginess that I'm talking about. But again, it's free. It's fun. Uh, down here at the very bottom, this is the part that fascinates me the most. Uh, you've got the all the Apollo missions down here. And if you click on one, it brings you to its trajectory and time sped up. What I love about Apollo 8 is it looks like they just threw the astronauts up like you would throw a basketball at a at a hoop moving so you've got three guys in a little capsule you know you got frank borman james lovell and william anders they're just sort of shooting themselves out into space they drop into the moon's orbit they orbit the moon i think these guys basically just prove the concept that they could get to lunar orbit and come back um i don't believe that i, I know that there was no landing with apollo 8 or 10 and um so you can see that they once they do their few orbits around the moon, they shoot themselves back and uh, return safely to Earth and prove the concept. You know, So then NASA knows, well, we made this mistake, we made that mistake, we can go back and correct those, uh, and we did this right, we did that right. And you can see on this particular orbit, they stayed a little longer around the moon, and that's you know indicative by the, the green swirly lines that you see there. And uh, what I find interesting is that if you go through these missions, they're the the TLI or translunar injection sometimes is way above the plane of the moon earth orbit and sometimes like on this mission it's right in line with the plane of the earth moon orbit so that's kind of interesting stuff they kind of did a few different maneuvers on their way out there which I find pretty interesting and you can see Apollo 10 just doing its orbits. Again, the, the orbit is squiggly like that because the moon is not stationary in space, and so you've got to stay around it while it moves as well. So there's parts of your orbit where you're almost stationary, quote-unquote, in space, even though that's really not true at all. But you guys, I think y'all get what I'm saying there. So it's cool. that You can go through each one of these missions and check out the different trajectories. And um, so we'll go through each one of these here real quick. And I'll kind of show how they were done. Again, these simulations are probably pretty accurate. I would imagine there's, you know, small discrepancies or inconsistencies in them. But overall, for the, for the majority of it, I think that these are pretty awesome. I think it, gives, it gave me a whole new perspective on how these missions were done. Uh, again, the moon is 250 or so, a little bit less, thousand miles away, 250,000 miles, give or take. Um, usually it's about 230 or so. That's still a quarter of a million miles away. That's not an easy task by any stretch of the imagination. Also, your object is a quarter million miles away, and it's moving at a pretty incredible rate. So you've got to, sh again, shoot yourself into interstellar or interplanetary uh, space and hope that your calculations were right you gotta hope you got shot into the right place and you can see as they go back here they go kind of under the orbit of the earth moon system and on the way out they went above it which is pretty cool and it just you know i guess that depends on time of year and um 
trajectory, mission, mission trajectories, and things like that. There's a lot of variables here. It's not easy stuff. That's why they call it rocket science. Everybody knows the story of Apollo 13. Uh, the guys had a pretty much catastrophe on the way out to the moon. And uh, so they had to orbit the moon, just kind of use it as a slingshot to come right back, uh, which is you know called a free return trajectory. And these guys made it back successfully. If you've never seen Apollo 13, you definitely need to go check that out. It's a great movie. And you can just see how the guys sort of uh, went out and came back. Uh, again, we know that they all made it. Spoiler alert if you've ever, never seen the movie. But it was made in 95, so you should have seen it by now. It's great stuff. And you can keep going down here. Apollo 14, about nine months later. And you can see they shot themselves out towards the moon yet again. And another uh, nothing but net shot. I mean, I would equate this to like throwing a basketball like a thousand miles and making a shot nothing but net you know and then being able to catch the ball when it comes back basically from a thousand miles away it's just you know it, it seems impossible but if you have the right tools at your disposal it, you can make it happen so I find I, I found this one pretty fascinating you see the Milky Way back behind everything sort of highlighting the whole the whole thing and uh, Apollo 14 leaves the moon orbit and heads back to Earth. Another successful mission. So cool. You know, so much science was done during these missions. Not only with, uh, you know, getting to the moon, collecting rocks and samples, putting down seismic instruments and reflectors, but also the, the rocketry stuff. You know, they learned a lot in, during this whole process. It was a, it was a learning process for everyone involved. And Apollo 15, you can see uh, 1971. There they go off into interplanetary space, hoping that their calculations are right. And then you can see at some point, the moon's gravity takes over. The spacecraft starts to speed up a little bit. And they sort of drop in around the orbit. It's pretty neat stuff. This one's a longer orbit. I, I'm again. I'm not an expert on the Apollo missions. This is more of a freeform video. Again, I'm just kind of doing this one for fun. But it appears to me that they stayed much longer with Apollo 15, just because of its orbit and uh, sort of the duration of the astronauts sort of hanging out in that lunar orbit. Pretty interesting stuff. Again, it's eye-opening to me because I'm not an expert. I don't really know too much about these Apollo missions. But seeing this in this way has definitely opened my eyes to what they were up against. And it just it's just incredible stuff. And you can see it's a pretty slow going there after they leave the moon. Uh, at some point, the Earth's gravity will start to grab a hold of them and... Pull them in. You can see that the rate that the Apollo 15 dot there is moving is increasing, and uh, it continues to increase by the time that they get back. You see, boom, they hit the ocean and all is well. And uh, so you can keep going down here. Apollo 16, second to the last mission, and uh, I believe they had more missions planned past Apollo 17, but due to budget cuts and uh, I think lack of public interest, uh, they stopped going to the moon. So there was a few different reasons why they stopped going to the moon. And um, mostly I think it was budgetary reasons and, and things like that. It's not cheap to do what they did during the Apollo missions. They had to build technologies from scratch. They had to build those capsules and the rockets all from scratch. And most of them I, I've heard they were one-offs. So it was like impossible to uh, sort of replicate some of that stuff. We have the technology now, but there's not a whole lot of money being funneled into NASA. So uh, as soon as we triple NASA's budget, I'm sure going back to the moon would be fairly, uh, fairly routine. But until we build the uh, SLS or the Space Launch System um, and test it along with the Orion capsule, which is coming up, I think, later this year, uh, hopefully we'll get back to the moon in the next decade or so, it seems. Uh, I don't know if the time frame that they have spelled out now is realistic. We'll see. Um, 
I'm skeptical, but we'll see. I, I really do hope they make it, and because uh, I would love to be a part of a generation that goes to the moon again. I think that would be a beautiful and fascinating thing to be a part of. And Apollo 16 splashed down safely. All the guys get back home. And uh, Apollo 17, the last mission, pretty special mission. Um, these guys went out there and, again, did a nice long orbit of the moon. It, it looks like these missions got longer and longer as time went on. They realized what worked and what didn't, and they were able to correct mistakes. And so they were able to do longer missions on the surface. And uh, what a lonely time, though, for the guy who had to be the uh, command module pilot and sit in orbit around the moon and just wait for the guys on the surface of the moon to sort of come back up, redock, and then head back to Earth. I know that was probably the best job in the world, though, at that time, besides the guys being on the moon, because, you know, you get views of the dark side or the far side of the moon. You get, you know, intergalactic space uh, is probably beautiful at on the dark side or the far side, whatever you want to call it. So there, I guess there's job perks, um, but it would seem pretty lonely to be back there and uh, not, not have anybody really to talk to other than mission control. I'm sure they had a good time though. I, would, I wouldn't be complaining, let's just say that. It's just really neat to see this stuff. Uh, again, kudos to the Sky Safari Pro guys for putting this out. Um, fantastic stuff. You can see on this return trajectory, they shot themselves above the Earth-Moon system orbit. So they got this real long, high trajectory. And, I, you know, again, all these trajectories have reasons for, you know, them doing this stuff. Not an Apollo expert, not a NASA expert. I just, I'm a fan. So I thought it would be fun to show this stuff. Here's a little close-up of Apollo 8. You can see the precision needed. It's just crazy. And then boom, you're in orbit. And just like that, uh, <laughs> you're in orbit around another body of the solar system, which is pretty epic stuff. You can sort of stop time and then go backwards. I could rewind time. You can slow it down again to real speeds if you wanted to follow along and watch and that kind of thing. It's up to you. This, this, this software is not necessarily cheap, but it's not really necessarily expensive either. Uh, for the Mac that I'm using it on. I believe it was around $60. I bought it several times. I've been using it for years. So, um, you know, I, I like it. I'm not really a big fan of having to rebuy this stuff, but um, it is it is pretty cool. You can check me out on Facebook. I do do lunar broadcasts, live lunar broadcasts, whenever the moon and weather cooperate. And I also do Saturn and Jupiter as well. So you can follow me at facebook.com slash deepskydude. I would love to have you over there as well. Uh, I appreciate y'all subscribing and liking the videos. It, it means a lot to me. And, you know, I make these for fun. And uh, you guys seem to enjoy them. So I appreciate y'all. Uh, I hope you have a great Apollo 50th anniversary week. Uh, it's been an incredible uh, week for me, seeing all the people's posts and, and all that on social media. So great stuff. Keep it up. Clear skies, guys. We'll see y'all in the next video. Y'all have a good one.